What's up, podcast listeners? It's your boy Agostino with another episode of the Agostino Zinga Show with me, your host Agostino Wagwan. What to do? How you doing this morning? It's Monday morning. I want to quickly squeeze in a nice little podcast for you. Number episode number eight ninety six actually eight year. We're out of the eighties, man. That's long gone by now. But I'm gonna squeeze in a quick one because I ended up waking up a little bit late this morning, so I've got a job to work. Um, I'm still kind of recovering from something I've got to tell you later on. But I'm gonna squeeze in a little quick podcast just to kind of keep you guys abreast. And also, I want to kind of get my initial thoughts out of the way before I kind of really break it down, articulate it for the next couple of episodes later in the week. Anyway, how's you guys? How have you guys been? Are you all right? Had a great weekend. Get to anything? Um, did you see any friends? Did you hang out somewhere cool? Did you go visit your family? I haven't visited my family in fucking ages. And they don't live around the corner. Absolutely bad, bad son and brother. But hey, I'm going to make it up to them sooner rather than later. But me, myself, personally, if you're asking what I got up to in the weekend, let me tell you, it was chocker block, mate. As you might be able to tell from my bleary eyes, you might not be able to tell there. But if you're, if you're watching um, or if you're listening via the podcast application or whatever phone that you're using, um, you might be able to tell that I've got a bit of a raspy voice. <clears throat> Use uh, more than usual, and if you're watching via YouTube, you might be able to tell that my eyes look a bit bloodshot. I might look a bit tired. Um, and if you're wondering, actually, why is it that you look look so tired? Because I'm working hard. All right, I'm working fucking hard. I'm doing a fucking job. I'm doing a thing. It's difficult. But yeah, um, I'm, of course I'm working hard, of course I'm trying to do things, I could be doing more, but essentially I am working hard, and essentially I'm trying to balance both worlds and kind of get myself, you know, I'm trying to balance the, you know, the creative side of my life and also the actual going out and being social, and it's quite difficult to do, right, but I guess what you have to do is probably pick your battles, so you kind of have to like, um, uh, be a bit more strategic on where, you, on you have to be strategic where you put your energy and where you want to be seen or where you want to go, right? You have to kind of have a plan in mind. And I kind of had a little bit of a plan in mind this weekend, but also it was a bit of a selfish endeavor, all in all. So, um, my weekend started off on Friday. I was working as well on Friday as per usual. So, I worked on Friday, my standard 9 to 5, and then jetted back off home uh, to pick up my stuff, get changed, pick up all my DJ gear, and then head out to... Um, Tap East to go DJ there so for a night called Tapped, which I'm DJing again on the 27th of August. So if you're around the Stratford area and you want to see me play some tunes in a nice little bar in Westfield, Stratford, then please pop on by. Um, it's a very small affair, um, just general punters. It's not your you know biggest rave you're going to see. But, you know, for me, it's a great platform, man. For me, it's a great platform. I love it. I enjoy it. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to play every week. Every weekend is something that's very rare. And I'd much rather, because again, having the conversation I've had with some people in nightclubs um, over the weekend, I'm I'm pretty I'm more I was already quite certain of my trajectory of my trajectory and how I wanted to approach things. Right, the fact that I wanted to use the opportunity to play in bars to kind of get that practice of playing every single weekend doesn't matter if I'm not playing the stuff that I'd want to play week in week out. I do try and give I do try and be a bit selfish in my sets. I don't try and always play to the crowd as I was doing previously the first six months I was DJing in bars and clubs. But now I'm starting to become a little bit more self selfish and trying to play my own thing. And then what ends up happening is. Uh, what was I going to say to you? Yeah, so so I'm now more, I'm more, I'm more sure of what I'm, do- I'm more sure that what I'm doing is right for me personally because having spoken to some people in nightclubs and bars, I've heard a lot of stories of people that are DJs who are, like to DJ right in this underground scene, who are who kind of forego the DJing in every weekend in sh- in bars that I'm playing in and would much rather play every four to six months playing the stuff they want to play in a warehouse or something like that, right? Don't get me wrong, that's good. It's got its benefits, it's got its pros and cons, right? I guess playing in front of an underground sort of club, you might meet people or you might bump into people who work at certain places. You might bump into an agent, label rep. Um, you might bump into an event booker. Whatever you might bump into who might kind of help you out and see, oh, that guy or girl is fucking good at what they do. Let me get them involved, right? No problem whatsoever. But there's also a part of me that's like, Without the practice, right? Without doing this thing every single day. Again, I'm I'm a big fan of DJing at home. I'm a big fan of recording mixes and putting them up online. But similar to kind of, you know, if you're a comedian and you're telling your jokes in front of a mirror, there's a real difference between like playing at home and playing in the public, right? Playing in front of people. It's just, a, this, it's night and day. There is no getting around it, right? Yes, you can be, I guess the, technic, the technical side of DJing, we're learning how to mix, learning how to blend or whatever it may be, learning how to beat match. That's a very important skill to have, right? But... 
the actual skill of being able to play music, right? Uh, DJing and putting together a playlist that's actually um, succinct or putting together a playlist and kind of deviating from it because of the vibe you're getting off people in, in the actual space itself. That's a skill you only learn from being inside a venue, right? In front of people. And it's a skill that's invaluable and doesn't really necessarily get enough love that it should be. Or maybe it does and some people just don't care and would much rather play what I want to play. But personally for me, I know having been in, I know some of the times I felt the most uncomfortable has been the times I haven't prepared, right? And the times that I've been, or the times I haven't prepared, I felt very uncomfortable. The times I've overprepared and, and stuck too diligently to my playlist. And the times where I haven't played out in ages and I've finally got put in front of people. You just shit your pants. Like, it's just a standard thing. I'm not going to lie. It's a standard thing. Some people, uh, you have those rare people out there who are able to just kind of perform, right? When they're in front of people, regardless of what's happening. But I'm not that kind of person. So with that being said, um, this weekend, so I DJed uh, in Tap East until like about what 11 30 then i ended up going to uh pussy palace which they threw like a little party at mixed garage which was mixed garage in um hacking wick which is really good too i'm gonna expound on that a little bit later on and probably in my podcast tomorrow but this is gonna be mostly about fold and that was a great time um it was good to see again because i've been to mix a few times right especially after my sets i bet i'll go to mix and just hang out uh talk to the bar talk to the bartenders um hang out with the, some of the security guards there who are kind of a bit of a laugh and just kind of just generally have a bit of a lark right and it's and it's it, it, it's you know it's usually quite full but not as full as it was that day like the pussy palace people they bring out they bring out people man it was crazy to see how packed mix was like i've never been to mix garage and it'd be that packed amazing amazing venue um of course pussy palace is like a mostly i'd say it's i'd say it's all inclusive but it's mostly kind of steer towards like the lgbtq tra- um lgbtq community so a lot of those guys are out in full force um the alphas were fucking insane they had someone performing i forgot the rapper's name uh they were performing too uh they had like a little actually you know what's amazing at pussy palace they had they built like a little runway in front of the DJ people, that was a fucking great idea. So guys and girls are on there voguing and doing all their shits performing. I thought that was incredible. So that was a great experience. Bloody blah, blah, blah. And then they roll on to Sunday, right? Uh, no, Saturday or Sunday, I decided to finally go out to Fold Nightclub. I already bought a ticket to Fold's opening night. And if you're not familiar with Fold, Fold is a new 24-hour venue that's opened up in London. Um, that's opened up in East, in Canning Town, which is kind of around the corner from where I used, uh, I kind of grew up. So it's an amazing space. Um, they've kind of outfitted out this old factory with an amazing sound system. Um, they've got like a, you know an incredible set of DJs there, a great bar and everything else. And it opened up, well, it, it unofficially opened a few weeks ago with a few other events, but kind of to the public opened up this weekend. And I was kind of in two minds about going. I didn't want to go because I, re- I was a little bit tired from the whole experience of DJing, of working the whole week, doing a nine to five and then DJing on a Friday. It's always, it's kind of taking its toll on me, kind of like, you know, little by little because I'm spending most of my week doing a podcast, I'm writing on a blog. I mean, my mind's kind of always constantly on so I kind of just wanted to have like an off switch night, but I kind of thought, you know what? It's the first night, it's opening night. It's going to be something that's going to last, last, um, live with me forever, regardless if it's good or bad, right? I just wanted to see it with my own eyes. I'm a big believer in just seeing things, right? Um, experiencing it for yourself. Everyone, I don't know. There's a thing in London, uh, maybe most of most, most, most prevalent cities are like this. There's this weird like cynicism with stuff that you haven't actually done. Or you actually haven't been to yourself, right? Um, you hear someone say something like, ah, man, that, that's over or that's finished. That's dead. But when's the last time you went? When did you have you actually been there, or you just like talking from secondhand experience with other people that have told you, or third-hand stories? Like I like to actually go myself, actually see it for myself, and make my own mind up, right? Because sometimes people as well, like um, this is a weird example, a real parallel to to cross with. But I've always it's something that's kind of like always baffled me. Oh no, it's something that's baffled me, not always, because it's only something recent. But the restaurant Chicken Sours, right? It's a very popular restaurant. They've opened, I think they're about to open up another space somewhere. They've got a space in Dawson. They've got one in Covent Garden. I think they're going to open up a third location. Or maybe I said fourth, I don't know. But they've got another location opening up. I've been there three times, right? Um, I've been to, I've been twice to the Dawson location. No, I've been twice, sir. Let me not lie. I've been once to the Dawson location and I've been once to the, um, to the location in, no, actually, I've been three times. I've been twice to Dawson and I've been once to the one in Covent Garden. And all three occasions I've been, I've, I thought it was quite mediocre, right? I thought the chicken was quite dry. Um, and I thought the best thing that they served on the menu wasn't even a chicken dish. It was an aubergine, like the fried aubergine. Um, I think they chitlins or dumplings they've got, right? They're, those are fucking delicious. But it's a chicken restaurant, right? The chicken should be the best thing on the menu, but it's not. Not that great. I don't think it's that amazing. So 
if I go by what everyone else says, right, Chicken Towers is like one of the best fried chicken spots in London. They've got an amazing recipe, blah, 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 blah. But I don't think it's that good, personally. I swear to God, in my life, I don't think it's that good. I think my local chicken shop has better chicken in them. I know it might be sacrilegious to say that, but that's my own opinion. Now, I've only got that opinion because I've been there myself and I've, with a, you know, I'm not, I've not gone into it with any sort of cynicism. I've gone into an open eye and op an open mind and wanted to be, well, went, I wanted to be impressed, right? And I went in there and I was a bit underwhelmed by it. So the same goes with these clubs and nightclubs and stuff, and nights especially, or bars. I want to just go and experience it myself. So I thought, you know what? And let me, let, me, let me put my big boy boots on and head out and go to Fold and just see what it's about. And then I kind of remembered lastminute.com like because I'm a bit of a numpty. I remember, oh, yeah, it's a 24-hour club, right? So I don't need to go at 10 p.m. on a Saturday. I can just sleep in and go in at, I don't know, sometime in the morning at 4 a.m. or something on a Sunday morning. So I did just that. I hung out a little bit with uh, the brunette and her brother who came to visit, which was quite cool. We watched some videos, we chilled out, ate some food, and I went to bed. I went to bed and I, with the aim of waking up at five and then heading to the um, nightclub. So I ended up doing that. I ended up waking up um, just in time to, just in t enough time for me to prepare and try and get a bus there. But unfortunately, by the time I got ready and shit, it's weird because when you get ready, when you get wake up really early in the morning, it takes you much longer to get ready than you would in a normal time of the day. I was just running really slow, really lethargic. So I ended up finally getting up and going. And I ended up leaving my house, but by the time I left my house, I've missed the bus. And I think the buses come every five, every half an hour, um, I think after whatever, 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. So I decided, you know what, fuck it, let me walk. Because I remember, because, you know, it, it's kind of like, the, it's a it's a two-mile walk, but it kind of reminds me of a walk you'd make if you if you were on holiday. If I went to somewhere like Berlin or whatever, right, I wouldn't necessarily take a train somewhere just because I just would want to experience the city and just walk around. I did that quite a lot often in Berlin, mostly because I was afraid of getting off at the wrong stop and shit, right? And mostly because I just didn't want to pay for a travel card. And I didn't want to go... I'm not the kind of person who's going to go to Berlin and start bumping trains, right? It's just, it just seems nonsensical to me. I need to get caught and have to pay a fine. It's just ridiculous. I'd rather walk everywhere. So I thought, you know, let me do the same thing here. So I started to walk from Stratford to Canning Town, which is not that long of a walk, really. Um, and goes to make me even more of a bad fucking uh, son and brother for not visiting my family. But hey, I'll, I'll make up to them. So I ended up walking. Um, it took me about what forty minutes to get to the, to get to the club. Um, I was I was anticipating to kind of get there for about four, so I could see what's the let me get the the, um, the lineup. I went to get there about about four, so I could see um, World Unknown play. But unfortunately, I didn't get there with enough time, so I had to kind of like see some other guys play. But all in all, not that bad experience. By the time you get to West Ham Station, you can already hear the music boom, boom, boom. And like I mentioned before, right. The location of Fold is exactly where night, 24 hour nightclubs should be in London, right? I'm going to try and get up the lineup here on the screen so you guys can see. Why is it showing? Why is it like that for? Weird. Uh, you know what? Let me exit out. Anyway, I got, I'm going to try and get this up on the screen so you guys can see her on screen about the lineup. Anyway, the location of Fold is where it should be in London, right? It's on the outskirts of East. It's, in the, it's basically in the middle of a... Loads of factories and uh, post office depots. Like there's a DHL uh, depot there. There used to be a postal force depot there that I think has moved to Beckton now. So, uh, again, uh, Beckton will be a good area. Beckton, where the kind of um, Galleons Reach shopping center is. If you're familiar with East London, you know what I'm talking about. If not, don't worry about it. But um, there's a shopping area in that, um, in that kind of East London area that's kind of like an industrial place. There's some offices there. There's a UEL campus there, I think, in, in Beckton. Those would be a good area to have like clubs, right? Um, don't even problem with Beckton's that there's not real good transport links but I guess if you have a 24-hour club it doesn't matter because the tube will open about four or five is it I think five or something the tube the, the deal are open so you can people can still get home and plus the other benefit of fold uh, in West Ham is that Star Lane um, DLR station is right next to it which I didn't which I actually didn't know I was like oh yeah Star Lane is right here so I end up walking all the way there um, you hear the bass running and the actual club itself is amazing man because actually uh, as the picture shows the club, actually, let me try to get it up on here so I can show you guys and kind of describe it quickly. As the picture shows on the club, it's sort of like, um, it's, looks, it's like a factory, right? Obviously, it's like a factory location. And um, it's uh, you have to kind of walk up the stairs to kind of go in. So it, it's really, it's architectural-wise, it really reminds me of like a, a Berlin kind of club. It's super industrial. The idea that you kind of have to walk up these like metal stairs and you kind of go into this dark room before you get into the main club. It's got lockers all over it. And then you pass these kind of like red uh, plastic film sheet, like kind of sort of like a you know like an um, when they cut up meat, right? Those kind of meat grinding workshops. You kind of pierce through there, and you can just walk into a bar and you just boom, boom, boom. Do you know what I mean? so as soon as you walk in, you just hear the fucking bass running, and it was just an amazing, amazing space. I'm sure I'm gonna try and get it up here so you guys can see. So yeah, let me get up on the screen here. So this base, this this. If you, hopefully you guys can see this, the picture. So 
this space here, right? So that corner is where that this is this is where the club is, right? That that's basically the club there, as you can see. If you can see on the screen, if not, then just go hit the resident advisor. You can click on fold, and it's got an R coin and it's got the kind of pictures on there. I didn't take pictures actually because I was just so enamored. Actually, I did with my film camera inside. Someone took a one for me, but um, the space. This kind of this is the entrance that goes into the club. So you kind of come from this way down, right? This is where West Ham Station is, and Canyon Town Station is basically back around over here. And you walk down, and then this gate here is where they kind of let people in entrance-wise. The entrance, again, before I got there, I didn't look at anything on social media, so I don't know why everything happened. Now, and you found out later that people on social media were getting pissed off because they had to wait for two hours in the queue. They were getting annoyed. People were demanding refunds. People are, people were getting really pissed off because they're saying that they were acting like a second-rate bird kind. And there's some really like, kind of snarky comments written on the, uh, on the Facebook wall. And it looks like the the event page was uh public you could just post whatever you wanted to post and i think since all the backlash some of the comments were deleted and now they're asking for approval for comments so there's been a little weird little like you know you know how people get when they don't get into clubs they get really um some people get really uh i won't say it's entitled but i think some people have this assumption that once they buy a ticket somewhere not assumption i guess some people have an idea that once they buy a ticket somewhere they have to be let in right they have to just go in like it's just a it's a standard thing right you make a reservation for a restaurant you should have your table. You shouldn't go there and say, oh, I'm sorry, but we're full. It's like, what? I made a reservation. doesn't matter if you're full. Make space for me. So there's that same sort of like feeling when it comes to nightclubs. But nightclubs are a bit weird like that, right? It's like a little bit ephemeral. Uh, sometimes things can get oversold because they're not sure who's... Again, because it's Facebook, Facebook events or events in general, if you ever put an event on, you would know that you probably... For everyone that replies, for... for, for the like, Again, if you send out invites for an event, right? Some You might get a thousand people reserve... Res res uh, clicking to reserve uh, a spot to come to an event, but you're likely to only get 5% if 10%. Maximum 10% of those people actually come, that like physically come, right? But sometimes you can hit the jackpot and you could just get, oh, you could you could uh, oversubscribe on social media and then people actually turn up in their droves and it should have been itself. And it's like, whoa, I didn't, I didn't know this happened, right? And I guess if you're fold, you kind of don't worry about that because you're a 24 hour club. So you're like, okay, cool. Even though we've oversold it, imagine if the theory is, on the internet is that they oversold, which I don't believe. But imagine if they, they, they did. They might be thinking, all right, cool. Even if we have oversold, it's 24 hours. We should, be able to, we should be able to cycle people in and out of this club enough to get people in. But, you know, opening night, people are excited about the club. And maybe it didn't work out the way they wanted to work out. But regardless of that, I went anyway. And I didn't see all the stuff on social media beforehand. So I just kind of went, I kind of rocked up there. I kind of think I got up there about five, right? Uh, it, was quite, it, was, it was a bit light outside. There was a small queue, maybe about 15 people deep, not that long. So I, sat, I, I quickly stood in the back of the queue. I folded up my jacket. I put it in my bag. I, put, I, I took a little um, side bag with me that I usually take little places and faces bag. Um, I rolled up my bag in my... Uh, I rolled up my jacket in my bag. I put it in there. And I just stood around waiting. I thought, hold on, this doesn't make no sense. Why am I in the queue if I got a ticket? So I thought, no, fuck it. Let me go. I was the queue guy. I was the queue guy. He said, yep, no worries. You can jump the queue. So I quickly jumped the queue, went to the front, um, showed the lady in front of my, my, uh, my ticket. Had no problems getting in. Then I had to, then I had to show my ID. Then I had to show it to my bag and then I had to take a picture, which is a bit annoying, you know, a bit disconcerting. But I guess, you know, these things have to be done now. In most big clubs, I think they do that in fabric, right? And, I, and some Soho clubs, they do that where they take your passport ID, they scan it in and take a picture. So I'm guessing in case anything happens and you kick off wherever they've got a record of who you are. I don't know. It's a bit annoying. It's a bit like, you know, it's a bit black mirror-ish. But, you know, you, you do these things, you want to go in. Then as you kind of go, as you kind of walk in past the security, you get given your, your ID back. There's a little courtyard area, which I'm sure is where the little pop-up shops were. I saw people selling T-shirts. I saw people posting pictures, like record labels selling T-shirts and merch and shit. So I'm assuming that where the area is. And maybe that might be an area where they kind of have people like do uh, barbecue and food and stuff. That might be a good occasion to do that sort of stuff. So that was quite cool. And then you basically walk up these metal girders, these steps here, right? You walk up the steps. And then um, as you walk up the steps, you kind of head into the club. I walk up the steps, there's usually a security guard here. You quickly check your ticket. No, you won't check your ticket again, but you just walk in, walk in here. And then the amazing thing they've got, they've got lockers all over the inside as you walk in, right? So little key lockers. I think how it works out to, I'm assuming it's £10, right? Deposit. So you get, um, you put, and I think it's £7 for the lock and £10 for the deposit. Maybe £17 altogether. I'm not sure. Again, uh, it, it was a fuzzy night. 
So whatever much money it is, you put a deposit down, you get your you get your padlock, and you can put as much stuff as you want in there. So you, as friends, you could all chip in together and just stuff everything inside the locker, which is fucking incredible good idea because that then reduces people getting pickpocketed, it reduces people leaving jackets, which they were still doing anyway because everyone's fucking cheap in London. It reduces people leaving jackets on the side of the of the of the stage or leaving them behind the fences and shit. It's just annoying, right? But some people were leaving like you know you could tell they didn't really give a shit about their hoodie. It was like a shitty grey hoodie, just fucking you know, leave it on the side there. Someone jacks it, jacks it, but most of them possession possessions are leaving inside the cupboards inside a little locker sorry so those that, that was a great little addition then you walk into another one door you walk into a through another door and you come through these kind of like um again like i said um like a, if you know those meat packing places have those like re- red vinyl film things that hang up the kind of like curtains you kind of peel through that as you walk through you go straight into the bar and you just kind of hear the bass boom 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 and at the back you have like a kind of where the sound engineer sits with the lighting lighting and the sound the sound guy, I guess, a PA person. He's also doing the lights on there. Then there's a bar along the whole, the right hand side of the bar, and then at the back there's a massive DJ booth. Like it's huge, right? And I'm assuming they could probably fit eight turntables on it. Honestly, it's really long, and it's kind of encased on a metal cage, which kind of reminds me a little bit of the Burkheim because they've kind of got they've kind of got a bit of a metal fence, and then they have the speakers hung by chains, like super industrial. But this this ones they don't have speakers hung by chains. They have, they have them in stacks, uh, function one stacks of, of speakers, like on on either end, and then they have some at the back as well, monitors at the back. So amazing sound, and then they have this uh really cool because it's not super. Again, I like it. Again, I'm I'm, I'm not I don't despise. It. I thought I did. I wouldn't like it, but on the on this wall, right? Um, they've got these uh wooden screens with little holes in it, so it peeps through, so you can see the light on the outside of the courtyard. So then when it was kind of lighting up, even though it was dark inside, you could still kind of hear a bit of like sunlight was creeping through the in, inside into the dance floor. So the bit of sun was creeping through the dance floor, so it kind of gave a good vibe. And on the other side, they've got like a little stage that people were dancing, and I was dancing too. So a lot, a lot of the people there were dancing, having some good times. Like all the gay guys, was obviously, of course, on the dance. Oh yeah, the outfits. Oh god, some of the gay guys' outfits in there were so cool so much Rick Owens, so much bondage there was a guy that had on a ball gag there was like just some really good great looks really really um, awesome awesome looks from the guys that are in that venue like they just smashed it and um, some of the girls too looked incredible there was a guy that had like a sort of like weird it wasn't a gimp mask but he kind of cut a bit of this girl's shirt and made and wore it into like a mask like a bit of a mesh net it looks fucking incredible it reminded me of like a, a Raph Simmons thing one of the Ralph Simmons shows where he kind of had the actually his hair was kind of similar too. He kind of had the hair like really flattened down with a with a straight fringe, and he had a kind of like a a red mesh on with this with the lace hanging out on the side, and he was pulling along it, wearing like a massive trench coat, and like with just knickers on, with just sorry, with just pants on, right, and a really um a kind of like bondage vest on, just amazing outfits all in all, right. Really, the clubbers came out in force like last night, fucking insane. I loved them all. That was cool. Um, so the music was amazing. I saw some really great DJs. I can't really mention who. Um, I think I'm sorry. Towards the end, the four DJs were really sick. They played some good songs. Uh, Body Hammer were amazing. G G and Dancy. That I think that's who I saw from five to twelve. I saw G, um, G Dance, Body Hammer, I B I B I H T B X I, and Fold Crew. They were all sick. And again, amazing space. I think I mentioned it previously because I'm going to wrap up now because I got head off. But I mentioned it previously to a lot of people out there. I think for everyone that was visiting the venue, it was an amazing experience. I think London has been, we've been needing this for so long, right? Um, I think this, they've done an amazing, um, they've done an amazing transformation of the space because I, I dread to think what that might look like previously to them moving in, right? They've really fucking kitted it out. The sound's amazing. They've got great staff. The entry was kind of flawless for me personally. Again, I got that five. I'm I'm nobody, right? I got that on my own. I'm a no one. I don't know anybody in in that kind of underground scene. I just do my own thing here and late in the Stratford. I don't have any connects or anything. I just want to party and have a good time, right? So I didn't know anyone. I got let in really easily. The security was painless. I had to take a picture. It was a bit annoying, whatever, security thing. I don't know how you guys are a privacy. Uh, getting in was simple. They've got lockers in there if you want to be safe. I carried my kind of like bum bags. I didn't just put nothing in the locker. I just kept this with me all the time. Um, I guess maybe be cautious maybe because, you know, when once this club starts getting popular, maybe pickpockets might arrive and they can't really help that situation happening, but hopefully it doesn't happen. But I think overall, we need to take care of each other, like in that kind of space. We, make, we need to make sure that place is safe and everyone's doing, the, everyone's doing the right and correct thing. I think there needs to be maybe a rule with people maybe not doing drugs on the dance floor. I think that might be something that maybe people need to enforce with themselves in the community itself, right? Kind of making people like go away and not do it on the dance floor, do you know what I mean? And not be bait, um, just to kind of ruin the vibe and shit. Let's just take care of each other in that respect. 
and just look after the space, man, not fuck it up. Because I don't know, London, London, we have a tendency to fuck up things, right? And just in general, in club land, maybe there is, a, I forgot where I read it in the book somewhere on interview. Some, somebody said something along the lines of like, um, most great clubs have like a four year cycle, right? Every four years, they kind of have to reinvent themselves because, you know, it kind of gets dead and the people that were there before kind of say it's not happening and everyone's kind of always looking for their new thing right but places like burger and places like club division there places like prince charles uh the school being even maybe a, a recent example even ministry of sounds maybe not so much fabric sometimes they've have they've had these long storied they have this history right these brand names even plastic people if, it's, if it came back now people would queue up and go there I think we can achieve it, but it takes a lot of care, right? It takes the venue being really t Again, this is something that's going to anger a lot of people that didn't get in, but it takes the venue being a bit anal about who they let in. It takes, it, it takes um, the people at the door being very, being very um, strict with the entry policy with, in terms of the ID. You don't get in, no ID, no entry kind of thing. It takes um, a lot of work to kind of really make sure the space functions cohesively and doesn't kind of like burn out right and it takes also the punters going in there to kind of give it to give the space a chance it's the first night if you didn't get in and the queue was too long and the security took the piss okay don't worry give those guys your feedback right write an email um make an angry post right on instagram but it's the first night like cut the guy some slack like even if i didn't get in right i wouldn't be i wouldn't take it as personally as that because i think you know it's the first night yes i, w I walked 40 minutes and i would have been bummed if i didn't get in but overall i think first night um let them you know it's kind of you have to kind of iron out the chinks kind of get kind of you know um shake off all the cobwebs and eventually we'll kind of get where it needs to get to but i really hope that we kind of take care of the space we take care of each other in there and we help fold become one of the kind of like leading places to kind of go to on a night out or on a weekend um do you know what I mean? especially when a party 24 hours and it might get and again eventually get to the point where it just becomes the spot you don't care who's playing you just go that's where I think eventually they probably want to get to. That's where those greatest clubs like Bergheim and all those kind of places like Robert Johnson in Frankfurt. That's how they work so well because no one necessarily care, even um, Salon de Amateurs in um, Hamburg, is it? In Hamburg. Um, they no one really cares if the, what the lineup is. They just know it's going to be a good party, right? In this space um, overall. And it takes everyone. It takes bar backs. It takes the bar staff. It takes uh, security, people that are working there, the bookers, the venue people. Like everyone needs to work together to make sure this place works out. And I I think overall it will get there but for me it was an amazing experience i'm going to close out by playing this voice memo that i um that i recorded whilst i was in the toilet listening um kind of enjoying the experience it might be a bit embarrassing because i haven't heard it much. i haven't actually replayed it myself but fuck it let me just play it through through the speaker and this is how i'm going to end the podcast listen to it. so this is me in fold at probably about i don't know 7 a.m or something like that maybe in the morning um sitting on sitting on the sitting on the loo having a poo right this is me recording in fold let me play out here so you guys can hear this Let's go. There you go. Let me play now. Can you hear that? Hold on. Oh, there you go. Let me rewind that. What up, world? I'm currently sat in Fold Nightclub out of the toilet. It's an amazing scene. I can't describe to you how truly amazing it is to be somewhere in London where you can party until 12 in the afternoon. Actually, you know what? Let me restart that. That sounds fucking insane. Let me restart that and play it from my Bluetooth speaker see if that works a little bit better. Because this space was too much not to talk about. Turn off the Bluetooth on my laptop quickly. But yeah, Fold was amazing. I loved it. Great experience. I can't wait to go back again. But probably not very soon because I need to recover. I'm still feeling a bit worse for when I even though I've slept like probably about 12 hours. So that probably won't happen for another another month and a half. But it's there now. I know there's a space to go to if I want to have a 24-hour party. But not, not again. Please not again. Not again. Let me play this for you out here. Let me see if it works here better so you guys can hear this properly. This is me again at 4 to 4 a.m. Let's hear this. What's happening here? Play. There you go. amazing it is. What up, world? I'm currently sat in Fold Nightclub now. It's an amazing scene. I can't describe to you how truly amazing it is to be somewhere in London where you can party until 12 in the afternoon. It's our responsibility as a fan girl to make sure that the space is perfect and nothing shit. The DJ has been amazing. The crew is amazing. And the sound is probably one of the best whistles I've heard in a long time. Fold is probably going to be the age for the doors of a new age of traveling in London. And I can't wait to see what happens next. There we go. That's a good way to end it. Fold is going to be the dawn of a new age of clubbing, right, in London. That is where it's going to be. 24-hour clubbing in London. Amazing. Good. You all, everyone involved in that club, 
congratulations for it and make sure you release that fucking t-shirt i need to buy a t-shirt t-shirt looks amazing they've got a t-shirt with them um, with the opening night kind of symbol on it and i think the lineup on the back as well i'm not sure what it is it looks fucking incredible so i can't wait until that comes out very soon i need to get that merch out asap so yeah, anyway, that's been the Excellence Doing Show episode number 96. It's a bit of a short one today because I've, I've woke up a bit late. I've been having, a, again, like I told you, I had a, a rough weekend, to say the least. But anyway, I'll be back for another long, long podcast tomorrow to kind of really break down my thoughts and kind of give an idea on what and how inspired I was by the space as well in terms of what I want to do, my DJing stuff and how I want to take stuff and how I'm going to be a bit more uh, consistent and serious with stuff I'm doing on, on SoundCloud and stuff. So I've got some other thoughts I want to share. Some other stuff, of course, I've seen in the news over the week I want to talk about. But for now, thank you so much for tuning in. It's a super short podcast today, so I apologize for those who usually like me, the long-form rants. But I'll be back with you with a nice long rant tomorrow. So have a great start of the week. Um, I'm not a fan of all that Monday motivation stuff, but you know, it's a great week. Let's start again. Let's go again. I've had my breakfast. I didn't, I work, I'm going to work out tonight when I come back from home today because I'm you know, getting my stuff, myself uh, started up again. And then we're going to go from there. So it's episode number 96 of the Exynos Singer Show. Thanks so much for tuning in. And I'm going to see you guys again tomorrow. Peace out.